Ezekiel 36 contains some of the most important and memorable and well-recognized promises of the New Covenant. Uh, the Lord talks about regathering His people from the nations where they've been scattered. He's going to bring them back into the land. And when they come back into the land, He's going to wash them uh, with purifying water. He's going to cleanse His people from all their sins and all their idolatries. He is going to remove their heart of stone, and He's going to replace that heart of stone with a heart of flesh. He promises to pour out His Spirit on them so that they can actually keep the Torah that they have failed to keep in the past. They failed to keep the Torah and they were expelled from the land because they defiled the land with their abominations. Now the Spirit is going to be poured out and they're going to be able to walk in the way of the Lord's commandments. And the Lord is going to do all this so that His name will be exalted. So all the nations around, so every people throughout all generations will see what a great God Israel worships when He brings them back from the death of exile, brings them back into the land. He hasn't rejected them. And He doesn't just bring them back to make the same mistakes all over again but he brings them back, cleanses them, renews them, uh, and restores them to the land. But Ezekiel's uh, prophecy is not finished when he talks about the transformation of individual Israelites or even the community of Israel. He goes on in Ezekiel 36 to talk about the transformation of the creation. When Israel is regathered, then Israel is going to be renewed by the Spirit so that they can renew the land. The land has been desolate literally desolate because people have been removed from it uh, in exile. The land has been decimated by war. The fields have not been cultivated. The temple has not been rebuilt. They're going to go back into the land and they're going to restore the land. And the desolate land is going to become a fertile field. The fertile field is going to become a forest. And Ezekiel says that the Lord is going to reestablish Eden in the land. Now, one of the few places in the Old Testament that explicitly talks about the Garden of Eden is in this prophecy of Ezekiel 36. When Israel goes back into the land at the time of the restoration, Eden is going to be restored. Like other prophecies, uh, those prophe prophecies about the new covenant that's going to happen at the time of the restoration are also looking forward to the completion and fulfillment, the culmination of that new covenant in Jesus Christ. And Jesus does all, the, all those things, of course. Jesus gathers people to himself. Jesus cleanses us. Jesus takes out our heart of stone, gives us a heart of flesh. Jesus pours out His Spirit on us so that we can keep His commandments. And through us, Jesus, by the, by the Spirit and through us, is renewing the creation and Eden is being restored. That's an important uh, context for understanding the significance of the Lord's table. The Lord's table is a sign of the new covenant. When, when we hear that language as Christians, sometimes we think it's a sign of a new covenant of God's commitment and His promise to me individually. It is certainly that. But the mere fact that there is a feast going on in the world, all over the world, is a sign that God has done something epical in, in creation. Eden is being renovated. Eden is being restored. The feast that Adam uh, uh, spoiled at the beginning has been restored. We now have access to the tree of life, Jesus Christ. The new covenant has come, a new order of things has been established. Uh, that's the cosmic news that we're proclaiming every time we sit at the Lord's table. We're proclaiming that the prophecy of Ezekiel 36, the prophecy of all of the prophets, are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. They're taking real root in the world. The sign of that is our participation at the Lord's table in bread and wine.